What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue and I hope you're all doing well today. With the patch 9.2 Mythic Plus season finally open, people can now experience the new seasonal affix Encrypted. This level 10 and higher Mythic Keystone affix brings a little of the new Zareth Mortis zone into our Mythic Plus dungeons, allowing for some new enemies, buffs, strategies, and headaches to be introduced to all Shadowlands dungeons. First, I'll go into a bit of an explanation of what the new affix does, and then some personal opinions of how I think it looks so far. Before all that, if you have the time and end up enjoying this video, please consider leaving a like or maybe subscribing to the channel. I'll be covering quite a bit of patch 9.2 stuff, including Mythic Plus things, Rogue things, and just other WoW stuff in general on the channel, and have a lot of other videos that might be helpful to you. So, the encrypted Mythic Plus affix will cause these floating relics to be added to many trash packs throughout the dungeon and a set will also spawn with every boss in a dungeon as well. Each of these relics applies an effect to everything nearby once engaged in combat. An important bit of information is that these relics don't seem to be connected to any trash pulls or even to each other, so it's possible to accidentally only pull one or two relics when you make a trash pull and have one just sitting off in the middle of nowhere floating mindlessly. Well, I guess they'd float mindlessly anyhow since they're just big glowy rocks, but anyway make sure to keep an eye on which relics have been pulled into combat. The relics each have a specific shape and effect. The Ur Relic is the round one, and when engaged in combat, it will continuously chuck out energy barrages. These deal a chunk of cosmic damage to all players. The Woe Relic is the square-shaped one, and it gives all enemies a 25% movement speed increase via its quickening field effect. Lastly is the Vi Relic, which is the pointy, star-shaped one. This gives all nearby enemies a 15% haste buff while it's active in combat. All of these relics are really easy to kill and have like 80 to 90,000 health on a level 15 keystone. The really important thing about this affix is knowing which one you want to destroy first, because that will change which automa you have to kill. Basically, once all three relics are destroyed, a fancy new robot will come out that your tank will have zero threat on since it just spawned mid-pull. So you'll want to be careful and don't insta-aggro it, or make sure you have people in your group like hunters or rogues who can pop misdirection or tricks of the trade as soon as it's active. The automa you fight is based on the first relic you kill, as I mentioned earlier. So if you destroy the Ur relic first, then when the other ones are destroyed, an Ur dismantler will spawn. If you kill Vi first, then a Vi interceptor will be your enemy, and lastly, the Woe drifter will spawn if you kill the Woe relic first. I actually had to edit this part of the video because it seems a hotfix was pushed into the way these relics work last night. So when you kill a relic, the other ones are instantly destroyed too. I'm not sure if this is intended because they did a hotfix on some cooldown reduction issues they had, but just make sure you always nuke down the relic that you want the buff from to spawn your specific automa that you're interested in. Each of these enemies have unique mechanics, and when you kill them, they each give a special buff. The Automas have quite a bit more health than the Relics, so depending on the time they are spawned, you might need to focus them down, or actually intentionally wait to kill them so that way mechanics and stuff line up better or differently during the fight that you're in. The Ur Dismantler is a big round boy which has two moves. Deconstruct is your typical tank buster move, which does hefty physical damage and increases the tank's damage by 25% for 5 seconds. Basically, whoever has the highest threat will get picked with this move, so make sure your tank is that person or you'll really regret it. Force Slam is a big circle attack that hits in front of the Dismantler. It deals a large amount of cosmic damage and stuns anyone hit by the circle for one and a half seconds. This ad can be a real pain in the neck on certain boss fights that require specific positioning of the group, such as Margrave Stradama in Plaguefall. Upon defeating the Ur Dismantler, your group will be given a number of really handy buffs. You'll get 10% health and mana restored every second for 10 seconds, so basically a full health and mana bar, as well as a 200% increase to your cooldown recovery rate of all of your abilities. This does include Covenant abilities too, which is pretty snazzy. I consider this buff to be pretty handy on trash pulls, and especially for groups or classes with short and bursty cooldowns, since it helps keep good momentum throughout the dungeon, because you're getting topped off on full health, and your healer's getting full mana too, so they won't have to wait around and drink or eat. Depending on the boss you're fighting or your group composition, this can be an excellent choice on bosses as well, as some classes just have very strong short cooldowns, so this can help get you them back up really quickly. The Vi Interceptor is easily the most annoying perk since he is a ranged jerk that teleports away over and over. He also does a big beam attack on the ground that hits really hard if you stand in it when the cast goes off, so don't. Defeating the Interceptor gives your group a 15% haste buff for 45 seconds, 
So basically just a slightly longer lasting Drums of Deathly Ferocity buff. You can stack this haste buff with Lust or Drums too though, making it a pretty large amount of haste for classes that like that. Your attacks and heals have a chance to proc a small amount of extra damage and healing while this buff is active as well, but frankly it's a pretty unnoticeable amount. Personally, I found using the Vi buff on bosses makes the most sense since it's basically just a mini Lust. Some classes do really like haste of course, so if you're running with like a Fury Warrior they'll probably be foaming at the mouth to get this as often as they can, or casters so they can get their cast speed up a little quicker. However, Vi is pretty annoying to kill, especially if your group is melee heavy due to it teleporting away all the time, and the beam attack on the ground can be very inconvenient on certain boss fights or trash pulls where you can't really move around that much. This was recently nerfed a little bit so the Interceptor wouldn't teleport as often or as far away, so that's cool, but it's still a pretty annoying thing to deal with. Generally speaking, it felt best to just passively cleave down the Interceptor so you can focus on the boss mechanics more, such as on the Ingram Malloc fight in Mists of Tirna Scythe. Popping the haste buff after the first transition allowed us to nuke Droman a second time very quickly, which was pretty useful. Lastly, the Woe Drifter. This fella has one interruptible cast, Burst, which does a hefty amount of damage if you miss it, so don't. The Drifter is arguably the easiest of the three Automa to deal with as long as you have an interrupt available, and it gives the most situationally useful buff of the three. For one minute, your entire group will take 15% less damage, move 150% faster, and will be stealthed. This allows for some interesting routes and skips to be made whether you have a rogue in the group or not, since you move way faster than normal. The other side has a couple nifty spots where the Woe Stealth lets you skip very quickly to certain areas, and in the Streets of Wonder Tazavesh dungeon, the Woe Stealth can be used to quickly move through the stupid trading event thing that you have to do in front of Mize's Oasis. The extra movement speed, damage reduction, and relatively easy mechanics of the Woe Drifter also make it an appealing choice for the last boss of Plaguefall, Margrave Stradama. This is because both the Vi Interceptor and Ur Dismantler have ground effect attacks, and due to the restrictive positioning of this fight during the tentacle slams and the tank positioning of adds, it can be very dangerous having certain Automa active. The Woe Drifter though is just a simple interrupt, so it can be easily cleaved down and not really have any dangerous impact on your fight mechanics. The extra movement speed and damage reduction can also help a tiny bit when dealing with the infectious rain cast and moving quickly to avoid the tentacle slams. Or you know, just burn the crap out of her and get all your cooldowns back because cooldown reduction is pretty sweet. So, now that you know how they all work and have a few examples of where they come in handy, what do I think of this new affix? <laughs> Honestly, I don't really care for it very much. I mean, it's not bad by any means, but it also isn't some like super cool or amazing thing either in my opinion. While it does allow for some meaningful choice or whatever other annoying buzzword that Blizzard likes to use for stuff like this, the Ur and Vi buffs aren't like super crazy good. I mean, sure, cooldown reduction and getting a bunch of mana and health back is very handy and it frankly speeds up the pacing of the dungeon, or at least how the dungeon feels, but it's only for 10 seconds. Maybe if the cooldown production persisted a little bit longer and maybe it was a smaller amount over that longer period of time it would feel more impactful, but getting all of it at once just feels like, oh, if you didn't use your cooldowns when this buff came up then you basically wasted that effect of the buff. And a 15% haste buff is cool and whatever, but unless you're a class that really, really likes haste, it doesn't really do a whole lot to make you feel that powerful. For every spec out there that loves haste, there's probably an equal or greater amount that haste is kinda not that good for. The Woe Stealth is by far the most innovative idea of the three, and it can probably be leveraged in several dungeons to make some really efficient routes. It is nice having a choice whenever you pull one of these groups of relics because then you can decide if your group's comp will make better use of cooldown reduction or haste, or if you do want to try and do a stealth skip then the ability to have a choice is kinda nice. The other big bonus to this affix is that there really isn't a downside to skipping relic packs if you don't want to do them, unlike the tormented affix from season 2 which would add a permanent negative effect to the last fight of the dungeon. However, you also have to deal with the relics on every boss fight in the dungeon instead of it only being one negative effect on one fight, and I still don't feel like the overall damage gain from these is as impressive as some of the amounts we'd get from the tormented affixes anima powers we had last season. There is also the problem that if your group is a bunch of cleave brains, then they're just going to AoE the crap out of all of them and you might get the wrong buff if you don't have someone actively funneling to try and kill the specific buff you want as that's usually what I end up having to do in my own groups is just funnel eviscerates into the one relic to make sure we don't accidentally get Woe or Vi because everybody just wants to AoE. 
Frankly, I've yet to have any of these buffs feel like nearly as much of damage gains as we got from Tormented Anima Powers in Season 2, which is kind of unfortunate. It is hard to quantify how much DPS gain some cooldown reduction is, or some extra haste really is over the course of an entire 35-40 minute dungeon, so maybe that's why it just doesn't feel as meaningful to me. And I'm sure there are some classes or specs or players in general that are really happy with the new effects and they feel like it makes some big noticeable difference, but to me it's missing something to make it really have that oomph on the damage meters, you know? Anyways folks, I hope you enjoyed this little guide and discussion on the new encrypted effects. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. As always, my appreciation and gratitude to all of my viewers, and especially my patrons, who all help make these Shiba shenanigans possible. Thank you all so much for watching. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.